Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at rigid solar panels. Now this is a little bit different, obviously, than the panels I've covered most recently, which have been portable and foldable. And we're going to find out a couple things, actually, why you might consider a rigid solar panel over a portable solar panel, and also why you might consider a 200 watt panel over a 100 watt panel. So let's jump into that. So the folks at Bouge RV, uh, and they make a variety of things for van life, RV life, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, they sent me a 200 watt solar panel to uh, test here. And I've got decent conditions. Oh, you can see it's, uh, it's a hazy sky, sort of intermittent full sun versus partly sun, you know, kind of hazy sun. That's what we're dealing with today. Um, I'll try to get some shots of actual full sun because every time I show shots where I'm doing full sun Somebody comments and says hey, that's not really Conditions I have all the time Can you show me how it performs in more cloudy weather? And so then when I show videos that only include clips where I'm showing them in sort of mixed hazy sun Invariably somebody will comment. Hey, I'd rather see how these things perform in sunny weather. So today I'm going to try to do both We'll see how it goes. I may have to wait another couple days to get uh, sunnier weather conditions. But we're going to look at this 200 watt panel from Bouge RV and we're going to compare it to what I usually compare it to, my baseline. This is the Solar Saga 100. And um, you kind of get a, a sense for the, the size difference here. If I take the Solar Saga and put it up against the 200 watt, you can see even though I should be getting about double the rate of capacity out of this, uh, this 200 watt panel, the actual surface area is maybe only 40% greater. So that's, that's kind of cool. Let's talk about reasons why you might want to consider a rigid panel. So number one, the portable ones with the little fold out legs are a little bit less stable in places where you've got pretty gusty winds. I would say that these portable panels can handle, you know, upwards of, uh, you know, 15 mile an hour winds pretty well without any issue. When you get above that, it really depends on the direction the wind is coming from you know, in the, in the angle you've got this thing set up at, um, or whether or not you're, you know, you're, you're mounting it on the, gr the grommets rather than using the integrated legs. Now, on a, on a rigid panel, obviously, there are no integrated legs unless you buy one that's a rigid panel kit with an, a leg stand. Now, you could fashion legs for this. You could use the light post. You could use the side of your car, the side of your tent, a tree. You know, you can, you know, you can create your own sort of lean uh, support structure uh, for these rigid panels if, if you're not permanently mounting them. And that is, of course, another reason why you might want a rigid panel over a portable panel. This kind of panel is designed to be permanently left outside in the elements, so it's certainly going to withstand the weather better than a portable panel under the same conditions. So if you have a way to permanently mount this to a roof, to uh, a shed top, to whatever, um, if that's kind of the use case here, then obviously you want to go rigid, not portable foldable. So the cost per watt is another big reason why you might want to consider a rigid panel. Rigid panels cost per watt are going to be in the somewhere in the little over a dollar range, whereas you're going to typically pay uh, $2 on up, maybe $3 a watt on the Jackery, for example, which is always the sort of the premium price option as you're probably well aware. But what are the, what are the downsides of going rigid? Well, obviously um, you can't fold it up, so it's harder to pack up. You gotta be careful that you don't uh, put anything heavy or that's something that's gonna put a pinpoint pressure on, on the glass panel in the front. Um, the portables obviously have the advantage in being able to fold their solar surface uh, uh, to the inside so that the, the, pan the cells themselves are not being exposed to other things that might break uh, that, that uh, outer glass. So um, that's one reason. Um, so if you've got a place to stow this where you've got plenty of room, then, you know, rigid might be the way to go. But the other thing is you also don't get uh, the standard connectors for um, a power station. So what you typically get on these rigid panels are MC4 connectors. So you would need to get something that's got an MC4 adapter. I've got one right here. Uh, it's got an MC4 on one end and an Anderson on the other. And these MC4 connectors are waterproof, so you don't have to worry about these getting rained on. Um, they, they should handle rain just fine. Here's another MC4 style adapter uh, that goes to the 8mm style that the uh, Jackery uses. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and use this one since this is the same 
uh, connector style that is, comes off native from the Jackery panel. So let's go ahead and plug this in and see what kind of performance we're getting. Now, a quick look at the sun. Uh, the clouds are going to be moving this way here. So right now the sun is behind a little bit thicker puffy cloud, but let's just see what we got right now. Okay, so you can see we're getting around 100 watts. I think that little, we're moving into a little bit of a bright zone. Yep, so we're getting about 108 watts. Let's put the Solar Saga 100, just a quick comparison. And you can see we're getting 75 watts. So there's a label on the back of these, and all these specs are obviously online. In fact, I'll put a picture up here to make it a little bit easier to see. So you can see on this particular Bouge RV uh, panel, the max output wattage or power is, is 200 watts. The max voltage is 17.98 uh, watts. So considered an 18 watt panel, perfectly fine for all of your portable power stations out there. And then the max current is uh, 11 amps. So um, again, a lot of these, uh, a lot of these portable power stations will have limits of somewhere between uh, 10 amps to you know 15 amps or so. So you have to take that into consideration if you're going to combine panels. You uh, you don't want to you don't want to exceed the amperage because that'll limit obviously how much power you're going to get out of that. Well, one thing I want to point out is most of the testing I've been doing has been with this Jackery 1000, and when I plug this into the Jackery 1000, you'll see. And I'm going to top out somewhere around 112 or so watts. We'll see how far it climbs here. Yeah, so we're getting 108, but I rarely see more than 112 watts from this from from any 200 watt solar panel on the Jackery. And I think the reason for that is is this has a maximum uh, somewhere around seven and a half amp input as a total of about hundred and sixty three watts on this input Even though this is a 1000 watt uh, power station the input watts is fairly limited So when you look at something like this Bouge RV that has a max amps output of around 11 Amps when this thing is outputting somewhere around 200 watts You're never going to get that out of a panel like this in the Jackery input uh, so let's just see what happens if we go to up up the scale here something like this ace volt uh, this is a camp power 2000 uh, 2000 watt this is capable of up to i think 500 watts total input and i'm not sure what the amps limitation is but it's certainly well above what this uh, 200 watt panel can produce so now i've got the anderson connector in the side of this ace volt 2000 watt power supply Kind of bright out here it's hard to see this display but i am getting 146 watts so it's bouncing around 138 146 or 7 watts so pretty significant increase here so that's really i think the true indicator of the output of this panel right now at the angle that i have it uh, in terms of its orientation to the sun and so i am actually getting a lot more output what happens if you use something that's more typical in the 500 watt range that has a maximum input of about 100 watts if I were to hook a panel that is producing more than 100 watts. So as you can see on the jacket right now, this guy is producing 110 watts. So the max input on this to-go power is 100 watts. So this is what happens if I plug this in. This has overcurrent protection, so it shouldn't hurt the unit, right? But we are not going to get more than about 97 watts. So why would you ever put a larger solar panel than 100 watts into a smaller device like this? So obviously if you're in more typical, say less pristine conditions with a lot of uh, hazy sun, um, your panel is not gonna be producing anywhere near 100 watts. If it's a 100 watt panel, you're probably gonna be lucky to be getting 40 or 50 watts out of that. So in the case of a 200 watt panel, you're gonna get somewhere in the neighborhood of 80 to maybe 90 watts out of that. And so you're still going to more efficiently charge this thing at a much more faster rate, even in less ideal conditions, this thing will just throttle the input down so that it doesn't exceed its 100, 100 watt uh, maximum. So that's what you can expect and why you might want to consider a 120 watt or a 200 watt panel for something that even has a max of 100. Hope that helps. So taking a look at this, at the, at this panel, um, it does have this nice aluminum frame that is pre-drilled. Here's a, you know, a ground, uh, a pre-drilled ground uh, connector. There's uh, pre-drilled uh, pre holes already for 
the attachment accessories that you can buy and there's a bunch of different accessories depending on how you want to mount this and to what you're going to mount this um, they sell all the accessories that that you might need that you can order separately based on what your particular needs are but you shouldn't have to do any drilling here they're pre-drilled for all of the mounting brackets that you would typically need on these so this 200 watt panel from uh, Bouge RV is a very solid panel if you're looking for something that's uh, a little bit more output than a, just a straight 100 watt panel you want the convenience of having just one panel to move that's another thing um, if you're using multiple 100 watt panels uh, for optimal alignment you're going to have to move multiple panels you know every hour or so to try to realign them for optimal watt, watt output um, if you have one panel that's less stuff that you have to move around so there's i guess an advantage there and i guess the big thing is if you got a place to mount this either permanently then it's a no-brainer you really should be looking at, at a rigid panel anyway uh, but if you've got the room for it and you can keep it safe i think this is a pretty good option over the over the portable panels if you've got uh you know ample room to store this thing um, it's just going to be able to be set out in you know in the elements and, and just left for days if that's what you need to do or weeks or months so hopefully you found some of that information helpful you really do need to consider what the you know the input power constraints are on the power station that you have or that you're shopping for and how that kind of aligns with the power and current output of the solar panel that you'd like to use and if you've got any questions about that please leave them in the comments below i do try to read all the comments and i'd be happy to try to answer your question if i can and uh yeah so that's about all i got for you thanks for sticking with me today and i do hope to see you in the next one until then have fun out there